Welcome to Easter Encounter. This is a virtual prayer experience through the last days in the life of Jesus. The encounter will last about 45 minutes as we walk through this together. We'll stop at eight stations, often referred to as the Stations of the Cross. These stations have been written to engage your body, heart, soul, and mind as you worship and connect with the living Jesus. I'll be here to guide us through each one, reading scripture, leading us into a time of reflection, and then offering a prayer. The eight stations that we will visit took place between Palm Sunday and Good Friday. It's in the days in between where Jesus has moments alone with his disciples and with those who hated him. The week begins with Palm Sunday as the historical day where Jesus rode a cult into the city of Jerusalem and people worshiped him with singing. People of faith observe Good Friday as a solemn day of reflection upon Jesus' death and burial. We're going to go through each station collectively. However, it's gonna have an intimate feel as we do so from the comforts of our personal living spaces and at a time that works best for you. If you are going through this at our live event, the chat room is open and our wonderful hosts are present to pray with you in the chat room and to meet you on the journey. They're also going to be present after the encounter ends for additional prayer and encouragement. You are invited to participate in your own way. You may choose to simply listen and ponder all of this in your heart. You can play this while you're out on a walk or sitting out in nature. If possible, I recommend that you keep a journal or pen nearby for you to write down your thoughts and prayers. You can even do so on an app on your phone. Keep in mind that some of these stations are tactile for a more hands-on experience. Let me suggest having some of these household items near you. A pen and journal, a candle and lighter, a nail, a fabric or cloth, and a spice from your kitchen. We're going to begin shortly. As you get settled in, reflect on what Jesus has done for you. This journey is personal. He promises to be with you. This is your time to stop and be still. We encourage you right now to go ahead and mute your phones, remove distractions, be hands-free and fully present.
Welcome in. Take a deep breath as we open ourselves up to God's presence that is with you and me right now. Yes, wherever you are doing this Easter encounter, He is with you. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My Father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, May your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. We enter our time of reflection on what was likely our Savior's most stressful night of his life. What burdens are you carrying with you right now? Name them. Write them down in your journal. Jesus' response was honest. Take this cup from me. I don't want to die. What do you honestly want God to know about your burdens? Name them. Write it down in your journal. Jesus' posture was surrender. He kneels. He falls with his face to the ground and prays, Not my will, but yours. Three times Jesus repeats his request. Three times Jesus is honest. And three times Jesus surrenders to his Father's will. Let me pray for us now. And if you are able, take the posture of Jesus by putting your knees to the ground. Father, thank you for your son, Jesus. We see how he came to you with his heavy burdens and got completely honest with you, his father. We choose to do the same thing right now. Maybe the idea of being honest with you or talking about hard things or kneeling is something new and different. But we see how Jesus modeled prayer for us and we choose to do the same in this moment. Father, I kneel before you now, choosing to be honest with you. I speak aloud my burdens that I'm carrying. Lord, I go a step further and not only give you my burdens, but surrender myself to you and to your will for me. If you will, take a deep breath. Now move more closely to the ground. We say it again. Father, I choose to be honest with you. I speak aloud my burdens I'm carrying.
Lord, not only do I give you my burdens, but I surrender myself to you and your will for me. Take another deep breath. Consider placing your head to the ground. Father, as your one and only Son prayed three times for the cup to be taken away, I speak aloud my burdens for the third time. And once again, and with complete honesty, I pray, Lord, not just these burdens, but I give myself and my will to you. As you rise and return to your seat, let us pray. Holy Spirit, fill me with your love as I continue through these stations. Thank you for what you are about to reveal to me. Amen. Luke 22 reads, While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance, and when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. In the darkest hours, when the religious leaders and government officials were turning against Jesus, so were two of his 12 disciples, Judas and Peter. One did so with a kiss, a kiss that is most correlated with love. The other around a fire in a courtyard that is most correlated with warmth. Anything can be misused. Judas's kiss meant betrayal. Peter's response around the fire meant rage. Judas betrays, turns away, walks away, gives away Jesus. Peter distances himself, starting with Judas' kiss. Are you one of them? One of those who follows Jesus? Peter says no way three times. Jesus heard every one of his words. Jesus sees you. In his kindness and mercy, he knows how you feel. He knows when you're scared. He knows when you turn away. Don't beat yourself up. Receive his kiss. Receive his warmth. Come close. He wants you just as you are. He looks at you with love, no matter the betrayal, no matter the denial. As I pray, cup your face with your hands. Let this settle you into Christ's closeness. Jesus, how is it that you take me back? I know what I've done to ignore you, to resist you, to know what is right and do the opposite. Why is it that you don't take your compassionate eyes off of me? In this moment right now, I confess that I've let fear rule in me. I've let what I see with my own eyes be what leads me, and it has led me astray and away from you. Help me draw near. Help me come back. Help me rekindle what's been lost, to journey with you. I choose Jesus to come close. Amen. I'll 
will read verses from Luke and John. Luke 22, 63 through 65 says, The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, Prophesy, who hit you? And they said many other insulting things to him. John 19, 1 through 3 says, Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. John 19, 23 through 24. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them. Jesus experienced heartache, physical pain, and isolation from his closest friends. Even his own Father God had to turn away as he cannot look on sin, and we know that Jesus bore the sins of us all. Do you believe that Jesus knows what we're going through? Read this quote along with me from St. Brigitta. At the command of the executioner, Christ undressed himself and freely hugged the pillar. He was bound with a rope and then scourged with barb whips. The barbs caught in his skin and were then pulled backward, not just tearing, but plowing into him so as to wound his whole body. At the first blow, it was as though my heart had been pierced and I had lost the use of my senses. Now fix your eyes upon the crown of thorns. Oh, the pain to look. Oh, the pain to bear. Now listen to the lyrics of the song by Chris Tomlin called Jesus Messiah. You became sin who knew no sin, that I might become your righteousness. You humbled yourself and carried the cross. Love so amazing, love so amazing. Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Your body the bread, your blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, how can it be? Pray with me. Jesus, you came into this world amid celebration and anticipation. Angels sang in the heavens to celebrate your birth. Magi from the east paid homage to you as to a king. The people followed you by the thousands as you taught on the hillsides of Galilee. They wanted to make you king. Yet just a few days ago, the crowds followed you into the streets of Jerusalem singing praises to God. And now you are forced to suffer the worst of human indignity. You stand alone as the soldiers strip from you the last thing that you possess, as the crowd taunts you. Just yesterday, you removed your cloak and laid it aside to wash your disciples' feet. You called them to follow your example as a symbol of humility and service to others. You called them to love and forgiveness and peace. You allowed them to publicly disgrace and ridicule you. Jesus, you were left with nothing, not even human dignity. Are you still trying to teach me something about what it means to serve others? What it means to endure hardship? About humility and surrender? Is this what it means to take up my cross and follow you? I don't like such an idea. I would rather walk with you into Jerusalem with the praise of the people ringing in my ears than to risk such humiliation. Lord, help me to fully grasp what you endured for my sins. Let me grasp your sacrifice the true cross, as you revealed to St. Brigitta of Sweden. Let me fully know the weight of it and not take it lightly. Let me have a heart that truly worships you for your love and your sacrifice. Amen.
Luke 23, 26 says, As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. Why me? Simon must have wondered. How did I end up here? I was just coming up to celebrate Passover. I'm a thousand miles from home. This wasn't in my plans today. What do I do with this weight? Who is this man, pierced, beaten, and torn on the ground beside me? Oh, the fears. This can't be. Why does he look at me as if he knows me? Simon had traveled almost a thousand miles from Serene, which is modern-day Libya, to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. He came to celebrate freedom from slavery by observing Passover and is now dragging the weight of the cross on which Jesus would die. Simon carried the cross but for a while. Jesus carried everything for Simon for all eternity as he died for him, as he died for us. Whatever is holding you down, holding you back, suffocating your soul, festering in your mind, attempting to take root in your heart, Jesus bore it all on the cross. It's a weight you don't have to carry. Yet look at what Jesus said in his teachings before he endured the weight of the cross in Luke 9, 23 through 24. Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. He doesn't force us, but invites us to die to our way of being in control and to take on his freedom, his forgiveness, his everlasting life by following him. Return to your knees on the floor. Let your shoulders fall. Open up your hands. You don't have to carry it any longer. Have you let your shoulders fall? Are your hands open? Fix your eyes on the road Jesus walked carrying his cross, carrying our cross for us. He didn't carry the cross in vain. He carried it with the full weight of our sins. In this moment, write out the sins that Jesus bore. Write them in your journal. Name them out loud. Name them in a whisper. Selfishness. substance abuse, rage, jealousy, putting others down with our words and actions, ungratefulness, living with a scarcity mindset, casting blame and holding grudges, bitterness, unforgiveness. This is what no other practice, self-help, or religion can do for us. Nothing and no one can bear our sins, bear the weight, but Jesus Christ. We can't bury them. We cannot put them in a box. We cannot put them off on others. You will feel free as you release them to Jesus. Take this moment to write and voice your sins to Jesus. He can bear them. He has borne them already on the cross. Jesus, help me drop the weights I'm carrying that are too much for me to bear. I want your ways, your freedom, and your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, for coming close, for carrying my burdens, for loving me that you would die for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Join
join me in reading three of Jesus' conversations while on the cross. In Luke 23, Jesus has a conversation with the women. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. Jesus has a conversation, according to Luke 23, with the criminals on the cross. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. And in John 19, Jesus talks to John and his mother. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. As Jesus struggled along the road toward that awful place of death, he saw a group of women among the crowd already grieving his impending death. In the most unimaginable pain, he turned to tell them not to weep for him, Rather, weep over your sins and the sins of your future generations. As Jesus struggled to breathe while enduring the torturous cross, he spoke with love. He was fully present, seeing the emotional, physical, and spiritual needs and bringing comfort and peace and love to others. Jesus even invited the very one on the cross next to him into heaven with him. He ensured his mother Mary would be taken care of. In the midst of unthinkable agony, he gave out his love sacrificially with his words, yet powerfully through his death. Take a moment now and light a candle. Hold it as you look upon the cross. Picture yourself present on the scene at the cross and in the crowd. You and I are among the billions of humanity that Christ died for. You and I are holding candles in one of the darkest moments of our history right now. Jesus is telling us it's okay to cry and to weep over what our world is fighting and going through. Jesus, seeing us in our suffering, wants us to tell others about his gift of forgiveness and freedom. Jesus wants you to know he is your home. He went to the cross to bring you home to him. As you hold the candle, have a conversation now with Jesus. You can do this in your journal or out loud or in your heart. I will let you know when we are moving to the sixth station. As we move to the next station, we are still at the cross. Luke 23 continues. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. 
for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Jesus hung on the cross before a crowd of people and was ridiculed as he struggled to breathe until he breathed his last. Yet he chose to forgive every one of them. He chooses to forgive every one of us. If you have them, pick up the nails and hold them. Think of those who have hurt you. Think of those who have betrayed you. Let God bring to your mind the faces of those whom you need to forgive. Let us pray. Jesus, thank you so much for dying for me and for forgiving me of my sins. Not only did you die for me, you died for all of humanity. There is no one who cannot receive your forgiveness. Help me to forgive like you forgive. Teach me, Lord, what it means to live fully in you and you in me. Thank you for taking my place to pay for my sins. Amen. Luke 23 says, Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. Joseph of Arimathea, a secret follower of Jesus, received permission from Pilate to take the body to a cave hewn from rock in a garden of Joseph's home nearby. Jesus lay dead for three days, wrapped in linen cloth. Imagine the Christ followers during these days. They had seen this man perform miracles. They had given their lives to follow him. They believed in his teachings. They didn't understand why he had to die. Now they found themselves grieving, grieving each in their own way. Their master, friend, healer, provider, shepherd, guide was dead and occupying a grave. What a hopeless moment. How dark the soul. All seemed lost. Hold the cloth in your hands. Imagine it holds within the threads what seems lost to you, what feels hopeless, what is most dark and grave right now. Let this cloth represent any dreams that are on hold or possibly have died. Friends, emotions are real and can be poured out on this cloth you hold. Let the cloth catch your tears. Let the cloth be pulled and gripped and wadded up. Jesus, we have sad days and sad moments. We fight depression and fatigue. We feel alone with our dark thoughts. 
none of us in the past year have been void of grief and loss. We long to make sense of it all. It pains us not to still be together. Our souls ache for human touch and a hug or a handshake. We continue to go without, without seeing our loved ones, without a job, without certainty. Hear our cry. We are hurting. We need a savior. We need to know that you are real and that all hope is not lost. We need you, Jesus, to hold us, to catch our tears, to sit with us in our pain. Amen. John 20 tells us, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he said these things to her. Fold up the cloth from the last station. Not only does it not hold Christ's body anymore, he is alive and can hold everything for you. Jesus was expected to be in the tomb where he was laid to rest. This is where Mary expected him to be. It's where the disciples expected him to be. Joseph was honored to lay to rest his Savior in his family tomb. Yes, the guards were placed there just in case the disciples tried to steal the body and make up absurd stories. Mary came to the garden tomb to prepare his body for burial, to fight off the smell of death. Take a moment and breathe in a spice from your home. Let your senses awaken to the reality that these spices were intended for the anointing of Jesus' dead body, but were never used. Imagine that Mary dropped her spices as she heard Jesus call her name. Let's pray together. Risen Savior, precious Jesus, I believe you are alive. Increase my awe of your resurrection and my gratitude for your enduring the cross. I rejoice that the tomb is empty. I thank you for dying for my sins, carrying my heavy burdens, for calling my name, and inviting me into a relationship with you. This is good news. Yes, the world is still as we know it, but you can conquer death. And I will believe that you can conquer so much more. I place my trust in you, Jesus. Amen.
I'm so thankful that you have taken the time to go through this Easter encounter experience. I believe that God showed up and I certainly hope that's the case. Just as you went through each station, reflecting on who Jesus is, what he's done throughout history and what that personally means for you. And perhaps as you were going through these moments, you had an encounter with him. You thought, I don't know if I've ever placed my faith in Jesus. Well, before you leave, I want to give you the chance to do that. You can simply say this if you're ready for that reality to be true and present in your life. Jesus, thank you for what you've done for me. I believe that on the cross you died for my sins. I believe that three days later you rose from the dead, overcoming the sin of the world, but specifically overcoming my sin and overcoming death. I put my faith in you, and I want to follow you for the rest of my life. If you've just done that now, can I encourage you to text the word BEGIN to 313131. Someone on our team will follow up with you because we believe this is the greatest decision you could make on Easter weekend or any other time in your entire life. I also want to invite you to join us at Easter at Epic this weekend, starting with Good Friday. Gatherings will be on demand all day long, and then at 7 p.m., we'll have a Good Friday gathering live. And then again on Sunday, we will have four live gatherings as well as the on-demand option for Easter Sunday as I bring a message called More Than an Empty Tomb. Thank you for going through this experience, and we can't wait to see you this Easter weekend.